Hi, this is John Kanopoulos from our office here in Athens, Greece. I want to share with you a very interesting case. This is a 17-year-old young gentleman, and uh, he presents here with uh, having treated his keratoconus uh, back in May of this year. We're in uh, mid-November. So this is uh, essentially uh, close to six months ago. Uh, we can see that he's on uh, fluoromethanol drops twice a day for this uh, cornea haze. And we're going to talk a little bit later about this. Um, uh, I will uh, initially try and analyze some of the um, uh, measurements that we have in this gentleman. I had the opportunity to look at his pre-ops and this was the right eye. This is the right eye today. And we will also um, look at the right eye pre-op, which is um, right here. So we're gonna do a back-to-back -back comparison between how the right eye was and how the right eye is. And this is very interesting for us, as we can see that the steepest K was 49.4 here on the right eye, and today the steepest K is 46.3. So we don't have the ability of comparing this quote-unquote Athens protocol case because we uh, this was done elsewhere in a center here in Athens. Uh, but we can um, tell that uh, this is a, a very minimal correction of the uh, irregularity of the cornea. We invariably see far uh, more significant correction of the irregularity of the cone. Uh, we would have, um, uh, the, in the question um, whether this was um, a laser and not six cell alone, it, it is answered by the fact that the minimal thickness uh, centrally prior to the procedure was 473 and we can see also the epithelial distribution on the right eye that was treated. Left eye, uh, by the way, was naive at the, at the time and these images continue to be similar today. Now this is his images with us today showing that the epithelial has changed quite a bit uh, and there, the central cornea thickness is uh, less by 53 microns. So at least 53 microns were treated with the laser. And apparently what we feel is that probably a PTK was performed as a, or a regular treatment based on the refraction as the topography has not improved much. Uh, by the way, looking at the uh, OCT images of the left today, the left remains naive, although we're starting to see that the um, uh, difference in central uh, thickness of the cornea is starting to change compared to the ones uh, back in uh, April. You can see how there's less changes here and uh, the thickness change in the center is less evident than it is, than it is today. Um, uh, thus, uh, there may be some eye rubbing going on. So from the comparison on the uh, anterior segment OCT maps, we saw that the uh, um, that a laser treatment had taken place we can kind of uh, look at the uh, cross-linking that uh, uh, took into effect. Uh, it went down to about half a thickness, but there's no uniform CXL line throughout. Uh, so we don't know what uh, CXL protocol was performed uh, with this uh, type of Athens protocol case, but we're used to, we have presented uh, several times that uh, the uh, actual CXO line is very uniform and about 60 to 70% in depth in our Athens protocol case, cases. And what I want to draw your attention is uh, at that little white spot that we saw in the slit dynamics valuation that we can see here that it's clearly an epithelial scar. You can see the, this little bump through the um, uh, Vanti noise in this image uh, and how the epithelium is much thinner here. And I'm gonna go back to that clinical image uh, and discuss a little bit about what uh, I changed in the treatments of, of this young gentleman. There's some ground glass appearance here consistent with the cross-linking effect, but this, in my opinion, is uh, an epithelial toxicity and an epithelial healing hesitance. And in my opinion, this is best not treated with um, topical corticosteroids, which may be the cause of this. We instead have discontinued the FML. It's been five months. Um, plus after the procedure, uh, we started autologous serum and lubrication. We're gonna see this patient in a month. I'm uh, secure that this uh, will have improved uh, dramatically. If not, I'm going to rub this uh, 
a necrotic epithelium, uh, almost a Salzman-like uh, highland deposit in the epithelial space with a Q-tip and let it heal uh, and thus uh, uh, work on this differently than um, the management that he currently has. We obviously aren't going to do anything in the, for the left eye. This is another image um, underlining the little uh, hazy spot here with less light of the patient today. Um, until this resolves, I wouldn't really do nothing uh, further for this patient as uh, his uh, left uh, images uh, on Pentacam today are relatively good. Uh, we can see that the um, uh, pentagon reveals uh, the, on the uh, sagittal curvature map that the cone is cooking. Uh, and at 17, if he stops rubbing his eyes, this may remain stable. By the way, the patient is 20-20 in this eye and is a 20-30 minus in the left corrected, in the right corrected eye. But we ex what we expect to see here is with that epithelial scar retreating, that this central uh, steepness may subside and the actual flattening that we saw before, that was about three diopters uh, in sagittal um, front curvature maps, maybe more. Uh, so at the question of the patient and the mother, whether we would recommend further treatment, I would wait at least until the one year anniversary of his right eye. So until May of 2022, which is six months from now, uh, until we make a decision and of course follow left eye closely for any changes, but at 17, and with the um, pentacam maps that we see here, I would not recommend prophylactic uh, cross-linking here because the patient is a non-corrected 2020 and uh, we may make the vision uh, worse. We will follow though the pentacam maps at a six month uh, interval. And as we have discussed for us, uh, it's even more valuable following the epithelial maps of this left eye because the epithelial maps may change significantly and uh, in a way to keep the um, curvature maps uh, stable and uh, hide a significant cardiac change uh, from uh, evaluating it purely with the curvature maps and visual acuity. So in retrospect, uh, what we can say is that, of course, we applaud the fact that this uh, gentleman for the picture that he had back in um, April of uh, 2021, that he did receive a cross-leaking treatment uh, we completely agree with that. Uh, this was uh, an advanced curvaconus on the right eye. Uh, we can see that the, the uh, uh, cone has uh, improved uh, dramatically. We will alter a little bit the treatment in order to see if this will give us further flattening because we feel that the uh, corticosteroids here may be adding, if anything, to the toxicity instead of helping uh, remove this uh, peak of haze, which is, as we saw in OCT, mainly subepithelial haline and scar uh, deposition. And um, um, also interesting for us to see how uh, cases treated elsewhere pan out, helps us become better, helps us see maybe what uh, we're doing different and better. Uh, thanks so much for your attention. This was a part of our Kiracanas, um CXL uh, rounds. This is John Canopoulos from our office here in Athens, Greece, signing out. Thanks.